Politicians panic over the new Omicron variant and resort to lockdowns once more. But are lockdowns actually following the science? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Remember last year when Dr. Fauci pitched us 15 days to slow the spread? Well, it's been 648 days, and once again, a new coronavirus variant has reared its ugly head. The Omicron variant is plunging the world back into panic, even though panic is exactly what the World Health Organization told us not to do. The WHO should really listen to the science, because the science says to panic, right? At least according to most mainstream media, like the Puffington Host. Omicron spreads like nothing I've seen before. In just a few weeks, it's making up 90% of all new COVID cases in parts of the US, like the part I'm in, New York. Now, some will tell you Omicron infections are milder. Don't listen to those heretics, because this science says there is no evidence Omicron is less severe than Delta, that's according to a study by Imperial College London. At the beginning of the pandemic, they were one of the ones pushing hardest for widespread lockdowns, saying it would save millions of lives. And now, in the face of Omicron, some countries are going back into lockdown, like the Netherlands. The UK is weighing a new lockdown. And Portugal has implemented a festive lockdown. That's when you can't leave your home, but the government will send you a party hat. London's mayor says new Omicron restrictions are inevitable. Inevitable. It's amazing what politicians can do with the snap of their fingers. But are lockdowns really necessary? Do lockdowns actually help slow down the coronavirus? Those are some of the questions you might ask yourself if you've been starting to lose faith in the science. And I hope you're not asking questions, because we have no tolerance for heretics. Science be praised! The scientific community is unanimous, just like science always is. Fact check, lockdowns save lives. They helped save millions of lives, according to that Imperial College London study I mentioned earlier. Lockdowns do help slow the spread of COVID-19. That's why the science says continued intervention, including lockdowns, should be considered to keep coronavirus transmissions under control. The International Monetary Fund even argued that lockdowns may lead to a faster economic recovery as they lower infections. What about your anecdotal evidence of all the shops that have gone out of business on Main Street? That's not science. So don't even bring it up. You don't want to face the inquisitors of science. So, who's ready to enjoy more lockdowns? Wait, what's going on? Is the CERN Particle Collider malfunctioning again? Hello. Hello, are we breaking? Are we getting through? Can, can you hear me? Hi. Welcome to Uncovered America. I'm Parallel Universe Chris Chappell. So, I don't want you to panic, but uh, I'm afraid you're living in the worst timeline. That's probably not a surprise to you. I'm hacking into your universe to tell you about a very different take on the science, one that was completely ignored by the experts of your universe at the start of the pandemic. I'll tell you more right after this quick commercial break. Welcome back. Wait, is this the timeline where YouTube demonetizes everything about the coronavirus? If so, it would be really helpful if you could contribute to your Chris Chapel on the crowdfunding website Patreon. So, this may surprise you, but all the people saying, follow the science, we need lockdowns, turns out they weren't actually following the science. Before COVID, the mainstream scientific community opposed the idea of doing large-scale lockdowns or quarantines in a future global pandemic scenario. Back in 2006, the World Health Organization said that forced isolation and quarantine are ineffective and impractical. That same year, 
a Johns Hopkins team of medical experts found that there are no historical observations or scientific studies that support quarantining possibly infected people for extended periods in order to slow the spread of influenza. On top of that, the negative consequences of large-scale quarantine are so extreme that this mitigation measure should be eliminated from serious consideration. But it wasn't just quarantines. The Johns Hopkins study also questioned the effectiveness of things like voluntary home quarantine, travel restrictions, closures of public events and schools, and the use of surgical masks. Even in 2019, right before the current pandemic hit, the Johns Hopkins University's Center for Health Security and the WHO both argued against quarantines. According to Johns Hopkins University, quarantine may be the least likely non-pharmaceutical intervention to be effective in controlling the spread. The WHO said home quarantine of exposed individuals to reduce transmission is not recommended because there is no obvious rationale for this measure and there would be considerable difficulties in implementing it. But after the pandemic hit, the science changed, right? Wrong. Even after the pandemic, many scientific studies were saying, at best, lockdowns only delay the spread. You know, like 15 days to slow the spread? The idea being that you could slow it just enough to prevent hospitals from being temporarily overwhelmed. But the spread was still inevitable. This study found lockdowns are merely reactive measures to already spiking mortality. And yet, Despite what the science was saying over and over, many countries enacted heavy-handed, long-term lockdowns. And they still had high mortality rates. I know this sounds completely contrary to what you've probably been hearing a lot in the media of your timeline. It's like that old movie, The Matrix. What's that, Slorbo? They have four Matrix movies in this dimension. I hate this place. But there's a reason why people were pushing the lockdown narrative. I'll explain after this final commercial break. Welcome back. So why have politicians insisted on using lockdowns? Much of it is thanks to a computer model created by Imperial College London. You remember them? The ones who claimed lockdowns saved millions of lives? The computer model was built by a team led by epidemiologist Neil Ferguson. The Imperial College model predicted catastrophic casualty rates without government intervention and advocated for severe lockdown policies. And it's strange that everyone took what Ferguson said so seriously since he's pretty notorious for getting just about everything wrong. In the past, Ferguson had been way off the mark with his predictions concerning mad cow disease, mad sheep disease, avian flu, and swine flu. And those bad predictions had cost the UK economy billions of dollars in unnecessary damage. And guess what? His COVID model is deeply flawed as well. Ferguson himself admitted it's based on an undocumented 13-year-old computer code. Data experts call it a buggy mess that looks more like a bowl of angel hair pasta than a finely tuned piece of programming. Yet it became the very thing used to justify lockdowns in many countries. Even in their own paper, Ferguson and his team admitted they didn't account for behavioral changes caused by a pandemic, meaning they overestimated the deaths in their original model. How badly did they overestimate deaths? They overestimated deaths in every country they modeled. So if the science behind lockdowns was deeply flawed, why did politicians around the world listen to it? Well, that wasn't just because of the Imperial College study. It was also because so many politicians believed what was happening in China. They essentially listened to the Chinese Communist Party. You know, the ones that lied and covered up COVID from the very beginning. China has been promoting lockdown since the very beginning of the pandemic. A senior advisor to the Chinese government says you need to isolate people on an enormous scale wherever you can. It works. Chinese propaganda somehow convinced the West that their lockdown of an entire Chinese province was saving the world from coronavirus. Many experts 
began looking to China as a role model that provides vital lessons for the global response. China's lockdown strategy is brutal, but effective. China took action massively at the epicenter, at the source of the outbreak. This is heroic. The actions of China is making us safer. According to an infectious disease expert at the University of California, Berkeley, China has proven that maybe if you are draconian enough, if you put enough resources into it, you can actually retard transmissions. This has become so appealing that Europe has adopted some of China's most restrictive steps. So, Europe adopted the lockdown policy of the authoritarian regime that covered up COVID and lied about the death toll, believing that the same lockdown policy could combat COVID in Europe. Well, COVID still spread all across Europe, didn't it? Who could have predicted that? And now, with Omicron spreading, more bad science is being pushed. A new report by the UK's Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies warns of a scenario in which we could face up to 6,000 deaths per day thanks to the Omicron variant. But guess what? That study assumes Omicron is just as deadly as the Delta variant. There's no evidence of that. Unless you count the study from Imperial College London, which maybe take that with a boulder of salt. But strangely, a lot of people in power are finding they don't mind China's authoritarian lockdown model and all the power it gives them, especially when they can ignore for themselves all the restrictions they're putting on others. Europe's elite seem to have a double standard when it comes to lockdowns. Over in the UK, Neil Ferguson, the great advocate for lockdowns himself, broke lockdown rules to meet his married lover. Scotland's chief medical officer resigned after breaking her own lockdown rule. And UK Prime Minister Johnson is under heat for his staff's alleged parties during lockdowns last year. Even the guy in charge of investigating lockdown parties Step down for, you guessed it, having lockdown parties. So to all of you watching in the worst timeline, good luck. It's really not going to get better unless people in your dimension start to wake up. What's happening in my universe, you ask? Well, we didn't lock down and COVID became endemic a year ago. So we're doing okay. Except for the alien invasion. <laughs> didn't see that one coming. What do you think? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell from A Parallel Universe. Thanks for watching Uncovered America.